welcome back here to this time my channel of an everyday life of an ASB. If you're new to my channel on ASB, I welcome you all with open arms. I'm all about creating mental health and awareness. This is sharing my life stories, the special syndrome, OCD and the like, along with mental health disorders, as well as tips and tricks along the way, as well as many other everyday videos that you'll see floating about on my channel. So feel free to view some of those ones that I'm coexisting, sharing with you all since it's too long to last to be honest with you. So it has been brought to my attention at the moment that I'm trying to do some more of the Authors of Man series as well as hopefully some more of the Beauty From Ashes playlistings of what I want to share with you all that's close to my heart of what I want to share even though I'm taking a break now for the now anyway let's put it frank about the ones of that nitty gritty one especially of the narcissist and psychopathic kind of yes series that I've been starting up right now even though it's going to be a few wide, wide variety of you know areas of topics that will be shared in there but I'm hoping that I'll get back onto that one maybe at a later date so this one's the autism and series as promised sort of thing or as shared so that have Hopefully, in all retrospect, we're learning something along the way, regardless whatever topic it may be. Can you smash the light that you're liking some of these topics I'm sharing with you all, regardless of what they are, because as I say, some of these needs to be addressed regardless. Also, as a form of awareness and understanding, regardless, because some of the stuff that I want to share does exist and actually needs to be addressed. And hopefully, within that, addressing it all that we can actually put something forward in a way of retrospect of putting it into action so this one's obviously autism and stuttering basically this one will cover the, the rest of it for later date as well of the autism and series which is the autism and loneliness autism and vaccines autism and epilepsy and any correlations of all this topics and i know you may have heard of some of these before but this is my uptake of what I think could be the likely cause or what have you based on some of it, based on my experiences and just what I'm seeing in our everyday life as well as basically also based on my everyday training and research that I did back in the days of some training hearsay and courses I may have done or just training in a way of a sense of youth lying basically of what I want to share with you all of some of the topics that will come to a later day. So let's begin this before I run out of time. So you may be wondering or shall we say stuttering which usually occurs or begins at the tender age of three to four years of age can lead to severely impaired communication if it's not treated early. Children who stutter usually are at risk of developing emotional problems such as fear of meeting new people or speaking on the telephone or what have you. Stuttering is also known as stammering, which is a speech disorder, as we should know, which obviously entails the flow of speech that is disrupted by involuntary repetitions and prolongations of sounds, syllables, words or phrases, as well as involuntary silent pauses or blocks in which the person who stutters is unable to produce the sounds that they need to produce. The term stuttering is most commonly associated with involuntary sound repetition as I said, but it can also encompass the abnormal hesitation or pausing before speech referred to by people who stutter as blocks and the prolongation of certain sounds, usually vowels or semi-vowels. According to Watkins E.L. however, stuttering is a disorder of selection initiation and execution of motor sequences necessary for fluent speech production. For many people who stutter, repetition is the primary problem. The term stuttering can also cover a wide range of severity encompassing barely perceptible impediments that are largely cosmetic to severe symptoms that effectively present or prevent oral communication I should say. Stuttering, also known as stammering, is a speech disorder in which the flow, which I've already said about, on a person's function, functioning and emotional state can be severe. This may include fears of also enunciating specific vowels or consonant fears of being caught stuttering in social situations. Here's an example of a child or an adult. Here's a, we will put that out across as adults as well as children here with autistic but not just people that are autistic, I'll address that now, that basically 
maybe they could be having a fear of being caught staring in social situations, be it that they're hanging out with their friends, the group of friends, or even in a workforce that involves them to, you know, do oral presentations or even just, you know, in schools as well with oral presentations or anything that involves us to speak. Self-imposed isolation, anxiety, stress, shame, being a possible target of bullying, especially in young children, having to use words substitution and rearrange the words in a sentence to hide that stuttering, or a feeling of loss of control during this during speech. Stuttering is also sometimes popularly seen as a symptom of anxiety, but there is actually no direct correlation to this, however, in that direction. Though as mentioned, the inverse can be true, as social anxiety may actually develop in individuals as a result of their stuttering. The causes of stuttering in children, or adults alike. There are many theories and popular beliefs about what causes stuttering, however. Despite considerable scientific research from the second half of the 20th century onwards, however, the cause of disorder still remains a mystery to be solved. At this stage, it is thought that stuttering is most likely due to some problem with the neural processing, which is your brain activity, that underlies the speech production. Stuttering can run in families too, however, in genetic form. So if a parent or a relative does stutter, a child has a higher chance of stuttering as well. Stuttering is generally not a problem with the physical production of speech sounds, however, or putting thoughts into words. Acute nervousness and stress does, do not cause stuttering either, but they can trigger stuttering in people who have the speech disorder and living with a stigmatized disability can result in anxiety and high allostatic stress load, for example, chronic nervousness and stress that reduces the amount of acute stress necessary to trigger stuttering in any given person who stutters, exasperating the problem in the manner of a positive feedback system. The name started speech syndrome has been proposed for this condition. Neither acute or chronic stress, however, itself creates the, any of the predisposition to stuttering. The disorder, however, is also variable, which means that in certain situations, such as talking on the telephone or in a large group, as I clearly illustrated to you all as a classic example, the stuttering might be more severe or less, depending on whether or not the stutterer is self-conscious about their stuttering. Stutterers often find that stuttering fluctuates and that they have good days, bad days, and stutter-free days. The times in which their stuttering fluctuates can be random. Although the exact etiology or cause of stuttering, again, is unknown, but both genetics and neurophysiology are thought to be the contributing factors here. There are many treatments and speech therapy techniques available that may help decrease speech disfluency in some people who stutter to the point where an untrained ear cannot identify a problem. However, there is essentially no cure for this disorder at present, as always, but there are ways to manage and treat this. The severity of the person stuttering would correspond to the amount of speech therapy needed to decrease dysfluency. For severe stuttering, however, long-term therapy and hard work will be required to decrease the dysfluency. As a key note, also for stuttering, it's not also for autistic that may stutter. It could be people such as, you know, people that suffer as Tourette's, as I said with you before, that when they constantly have tics and they stutter a lot. And it's a given of knowing how to go about it. Right. And next part is helping a child or adult who stutters. There is a lot of way you can do as a parent or caregiver to help a child overcome a stutter and they are as follows or even as for yourself. Speak with, speak with your child in an unhurried way, making sure that you pause frequently. Wait for a few seconds after your child finishes speaking before you begin to speak. Your own slow, relaxed speech will be far more effective than any criticism or advice such as slow down or try it again slowly to your child. Reduce the number of questions you ask your child. Children speak more freely if they are expressing their own ideas rather than answering an adult's questions. Instead of asking questions, simply comment on what your child has said, thereby letting him or her know you have heard them. 
another one is use your facial expressions and any other body language to convey to your child that you are listening to them of their message as well and not to how they are talking regardless if they are starting to stutter or not another one is set aside a few minutes at a regular time each day when you can give your undivided attention to the child during this time let the child choose what they would like to do let them direct you in activities and decide themselves whether to talk or not when you talk during the special talk you slow, calm and relax, which again with plenty of pauses. This quiet, calm time can be a confidence builder for younger children, letting them know that a parent does enjoy their company. As the child gets older, it can be a time when the child feels comfortable talking about their feelings and experiences with the parent. Another one is help all the members of the family learn to take turns talking and listening. Children, especially those who stutter, find it much easier to talk when there are a few interruptions and they may have the listener's attention. Another one is observe the way you interact with the child. To increase those times that you give your child the message that you're listening to, give them or her plenty of time to talk. Try to decrease any criticisms, rapid speech patterns, interruptions and questions. Last but not least to give you here is above all convey that you accept your child as they are. The most powerful force will be your support whether your child stutters or not. Treatment. Tremors for stuttering is based upon each child's needs and this is particularly true when, the, when autism is present however. A child with autism who stutters may find social interaction and self monitoring more difficult however, therefore stuttering treatment will focus on using speech in social settings. Speech language pathologist Kathleen Scala Scott of the University of Louisiana at Lafayette offers some timely tips on what parents can do to help with their children. Number one, have a consistent organised schedule. Number two, keep instructions simple, clear and concise. Three, provide visual cues concrete examples and drawings to increase the child's understanding. Four, use good speaking habits yourself such as keeping eye contact and listening to what your child is saying, not to how they are talking. Four, five, allow them time to finish their own thoughts. Keynote, they are not just for children who struggle with their speech however, as I said before, this can be used for adults as well. Treatment should always be based upon each client's needs however, and this is particularly true with people who has autism spectrum disorders because stuttering interferes with effective conversation skills and therefore social interaction treatment is crucial here. Social interaction and self monitoring can be more difficult for those with autism spectrum disorders so treatment will often focus upon use of fluency tools and social exchanges. Tools may include the following. Traditional stuttering tools such as an easy onset or prolonged speech how the tools are taught will be dependent upon the child's level of comprehension. Those with a higher comprehension level will benefit from a description of techniques either written or in a picture format, formed with a couple of practices. Excuse me. Carol Gray's model for social stories is often helpful for describing story tools for those with autism spectrum disorders. I'll link the description below of what I'm discussing here so that you can visit this website. Children with a lower comprehension level will benefit from less description and more imitation of therapist models however. Concrete visual models such as stretching, modeling play for stretchy, prolonged speech are often helpful to demonstrate this skill. Self-monitoring in context can be difficult for those with autism spectrum disorders so consistent repeated practice is often necessary to for this mastery to, to develop. To help ensure a carryover to everyday environments, teachers, parents and others who interact with child should gently remind them about the tool use. Tools for organising thoughts such as visual organisers, story verbs and visual mapping programs such as Inspirational Kidspiration, again I'll link this website below, can be helpful in organising thoughts. Once skills are demonstrated, they should be practiced in more to less structured settings. To allow this, to believe in this, is increase pausing to allow extra time to 
obviously for the pausing. One, organize the thoughts. Two, breathe in in appropriate places. And three, apply fluency tools such as an easy onset, easy starts or prolonged speech. Pausing can be introduced by inserting visual markers to indicate where to pause when reading sentences or paragraphs, however. Modern pausing if the child has difficulty with reading tasks. So, tips for the parents here, if your child stutters, if, is treat them as you would with any other child that you have, regardless or not, if any of your other children stutters or not. Above all, convey total acceptance for who and what they are. Also, within this, you know, treat your child like any other child with kindness and respect. Be patient with them. Work on communication and fluency skills. Even though this may be a challenge for the ones that start up, but even though it does affect all areas of a child's day, therefore the child needs as much support, encouragement and acceptance as possible from adults alike. When they are speaking, try to focus on the following. 1. Listen to what your child has to say. Again, use facial expressions and any other body language to convey that you are listening to the content of the message and not to how the child is talking. Remember to always maintain eye contact also. 2. Allow your child the time he needs to finish their thoughts. 3. Help all members of the family learn to take turns to talking and listening. Objects such as a microphone or a salt shaker at the dinner table can be passed around to indicate each person's turn. This can provide a good model for the child with autism spectrum disorders and helps them to feel like their family is in this together to support them. Four, last but not least, choose specific and brief times to work on strategies in the midst of everyday activities, such as maybe 5 to 10 minutes during bath time. Short, consistent practice is often the most effective. Tips for therapists and structuring sessions, or anybody for that matter. Structure activities according to a constant organized schedule that the young person has helped to create. Post these routines in the therapy room so they are aware of the schedule and what may come next. They, the autism spectrum disorder population benefits from most from direct engagement. This is contrary to the ADH population as well who responds to reward system. Therefore, you should teach and practice tools in the context of play or preferred activities to keep the young person engaged and to make activities meaningful. If activities are meaningful, they will remember and use them outside the therapy sessions. Research has indicated if children with autism spectrum disorders aren't first engaged, all the rules will and will, will not lead to generalisation. Therefore, engagement is key. For example, if the child is engaged and motivated to have a snack, have them practice speech tools when asking for a snack. Obviously, this is based on the effect diathesis hypothesis, hypothesis, I should say. So therefore, I'll, again, I'll link this one to the description below too. Keep instructions simple, clear, and concise. Be sure that the child is engaged with you and present directions multiple times if necessary. If there is no response, try simplifying the directions and or adding visual or context Cues. For example, simple fly, get your coat so we can go outside, to going outside, get coat while pointing to the child's coat. Provide visual cues, concrete examples and drawings to increase comprehension. For example, try sketching, stretching Play-Doh while practicing easing into a speech sound. Easy. Increase the child's self-monitoring skills and awareness of how behaviors affect interactions with others. Focus on the accuracy of self-assessment of his speech in simple and complex speaking situations. Then teach problem solving to allow him to change his speech accordingly. Keep in mind the child's level of functioning. Such, some are quite literal and some need more concrete examples such as writing the use of speech tools such as thumbs up, thumbs down, while others can use cognitive based rating systems such as your scale from 1 to 5. Address overall communication skills. By introducing and modelling appropriate skills such as eye contact, volume, rate and listening skills yourself, you will help to increase the child's confidence and self-esteem while reducing speech-related therapy. Young people with autism spectrum disorders, however, benefit from working with socially stronger peers who can act as their role models. 
to foster generalization of new skills, explore grouping the individual with others who have similar speech characteristics and who are good social models. This will provide an optimal setting to practice fluency, tools, social skills and self-monitoring. Well, this basically quickly ends with one of Autism and Saturn. Give me a like for thumbs up for support. Comment below. Feel free to follow me on the social media sites also down below in the description. Feel free to also share these videos around to family and friends because as I said, some of these will need to be addressed. Feel free to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already so that you know what I get up to or whatever. Feel free to also turn the notification bell on so that you are up to date with the new content of what I bring out regardless of what it may be. So thanks for your support.